They laughed, scaly mouths stretched wide in derision, as Donald Johnson presented the plans for humanity's first supercarrier. But their mocking eyes would soon turn to fear when they realized the primitive apes had actually built the massive warship. Donald gripped the steel railing of the observation deck, knuckles white as he stared out at the HSS Leviathan. Sleek Andromedan cruisers and Zorgan battleships floated nearby, captains no doubt smirking at the crude, boxy monstrosity before them. Two years ago, the Galactic Council had roared with laughter when Donald proposed the Leviathan project. Humans still use chemical propulsion? Hilarious, they guffawed. Where are the plasma cannons, the singularity shields, primitives? But Donald saw what they couldn't, the indomitable human spirit, the sheer stubbornness and grit that propelled his species to the stars in the first place. Let the arrogant aliens chortle and sneer. The Leviathan would be humanity's answer to a galaxy that wanted them subjugated and collared. As the shrill whine of a fusion engine powering up echoed through the shipyard, a predatory grin tugged at Donald's mouth. It was almost time. Time to show those pompous grey bastards what primitive really meant. The Leviathan was more than a ship. It was humanity's defiant middle finger to a hostile universe. And if it failed, the human race would be little more than slaves and pack animals to pitiless alien overlords. This ship had to succeed. Donald narrowed his eyes and checked his wrist pad. Two minutes to undock and engage the FTL drive. Then the Leviathan would slip the bonds of Terran orbit and show the galaxy what humans were truly made of. He smiled grimly. This was going to be fun. The HSS Leviathan slipped out of Earth's orbit, its fusion engines propelling it towards the distant star of Andros Prime. Donald stood on the bridge, hands clasped behind his back as he watched the viewscreen flicker to life. Stars streaked past as the ship hurtled through the void at speeds that would make Einstein roll in his grave. Captain, we're being hailed by the Andromedan delegation, Lieutenant Chen reported from her communication station. Donald nodded. Put them through. The screen shimmered, revealing a sleek chamber filled with various alien species. At the center stood a tall, spindly creature with iridescent blue skin and four arms, the Andromedan ambassador Primus. Welcome to Andros Prime, Captain Johnson, Primus said, his voice a reedy whistle. I trust your journey was uneventful? Donald inclined his head. Smooth as silk, Ambassador. The Leviathan performed admirably. Primus's eyes flicked over the bridge, taking in the utilitarian design and lack of holographic interfaces. I must say, Captain, your ship is rather quaint. Are you certain it's up to the task of defending against the Zorgon threat? Donald bristled at the condescension in the alien's tone, but kept his expression neutral. The Leviathan may not have all the bells and whistles of your ships, Ambassador, but she's got it where it counts. We'll hold our own. Primus made a non-committal noise. We shall see, transmitting landing coordinates now Primus out. As the viewscreen went blank, Donald turned to his first officer, Commander Ramirez. Prep the shuttle. Let's go show these E.T. bastards what humanity can do. The shuttle touched down on the landing pad, steam hissing from its hydraulics as the ramp lowered. Donald strode down, flanked by Ramirez and a squad of marines in full-power armor. The Andromedan delegation awaited them, Primus at their head. Captain Johnson, welcome to the summit, Primus said, extending a spindly hand. I trust you're prepared to discuss the Zorgan situation? Donald shook the proffered appendage, the alien's cool skin strange against his own. I am, Ambassador. Lead the way. Inside the summit chamber, the atmosphere was tense. Representatives from a dozen species sat around a circular table, holographic displays flickering with data on Zorgan fleet movements and planetary incursions. The Zorgans have pushed into the Telonis sector, a squat reptilian delegate said, Three colonies have fallen already. And what have the mighty Andromedans done to stop them? A feline creature asked, its tail lashing. Coward behind your plasma cannons? Primus's skin flushed indigo. We have not cowered. Our fleets are mobilizing as we speak. Donald saw his opening. He stood, drawing the attention of the room. If I may, delegates, 
the HSS Leviathan is ready and willing to assist in the defense of Talanis. She carries over 500 fighters, has a complement of marines, and can serve as a mobile repair and resupply station for your ships. The room fell silent. Then a insectoid delegate clicked its mandibles. You would send your primitive ship against the Zorgons? It's suicide. Donald met the alien's compound gaze. The Leviathan is tougher than she looks, and even if she falls, we'll make sure the Zorgans remember the day they fought humanity. A murmur ran through the assembled delegates. Primus leaned forward, steepling his fingers. A bold claim, Captain, but perhaps... Perhaps there is a place for your ship in our battle plans after all. Just then an alarm blared. Primus tapped a few buttons, a hologram of the system springing to life above the table. A cluster of red dots moved towards the Andromedan border. Zorgan ship's ambassador, a technician called. They've entered the system. Primus paled. He turned to Donald, a mix of fear and desperate hope in his eyes. It seems the time for planning is over, Captain. Andros Prime needs the Leviathan now. Donald grinned, a glint of anticipation in his eyes. Then let's not keep the Zorgans waiting. The conference room erupted into a cacophony of urgent chatter and frantic movement. Primus tapped frantically at a holographic display, his face a mask of dread. He looked up, locking eyes with Donald. Captain Johnson, we have received a distress call from our colony on the planet Zephyrus. A Zorgon fleet is attacking, and our forces are too far away to provide timely assistance. I know we have had our differences, but... Primus paused, as if the words pained him. We need the Leviathan's help. Desperately. Donald stood tall, his gaze unwavering. Ambassador... The Leviathan and her crew are ready to assist. We'll set course for Zephyrus immediately. Primus nodded, a flicker of hope in his eyes. Thank you, Captain. May your ship's primitive design prove me wrong. Donald gave a curt nod before turning on his heel and striding out of the room, his crew falling into step behind him. As they boarded the shuttle back to the Leviathan, Donald activated his comms. Bridge, this is the Captain. Set a course for the Zephyrus system maximum speed, and put the ship on combat alert. Aye, Captain, came the response as the shuttle lifted off. On the bridge of the Leviathan, Donald settled into his command chair, watching the view screen intently as the ship hurtled through hyperspace. Every second counted. Every moment the Zorgans bombarded Zephyrus was another moment innocent lives were lost. Captain, we're approaching the Zephyrus system, Commander Ramirez reported. ETA to Planetfall, 15 minutes. Donald leaned forward. Bring us out of hyperspace at the edge of the system. I want a full sensor sweep before we... Sir, Lieutenant Chen interrupted. Long-range sensors are picking up multiple contacts near the planet. It looks like a Zorgan ambush hidden in the asteroid field. Donald cursed under his breath. The Zorgans had anticipated their arrival, but they hadn't anticipated the Leviathan. Commander Riley, Donald barked into the comms. Prep all fighter squadrons for immediate deployment. I want a screen of fighters around the Leviathan as we punch through that asteroid field. Roger that, Captain, Riley responded, a hint of eagerness in his voice. We'll give those Zorgan bastards a warm welcome. Donald turned to Ramirez. Commander, plot a course straight through the densest part of the asteroid field. We're going to use the Leviathan's bulk to our advantage. Those Zorgon ships will have to either engage us in tight quarters or risk being smashed by the rocks we displace. Ramirez grinned. Aye, sir, they won't know what hit them. As the Leviathan dropped out of hyperspace, the bridge crew beheld a daunting sight. Dozens of angular Zorgon ships hung in space, partially obscured by the tumbling asteroids. And in the distance, the blue-green jewel of Zephyrus, wreathed in the orange blossoms of orbital bombardment. All hands, battle stations, Donald roared. Fighters, launch now. Let's show these alien scum what humans are made of. The Leviathan surged forward, her hull shuddering as asteroids pinged off her armoured sides. Flights of sleek human fighters streaked ahead, pulse cannons blazing as they clashed with the Zorgan craft in a dazzling display of pyrotechnics. The supercarrier ploughed on, 
using its immense mass to scatter the space rocks and force the Zorgons to engage in knife fight range. Zorgon energy beams splashed harmlessly off the Leviathan's hull, unable to find purchase on the thick armor plating. Their ambush is falling apart, Ramirez crowed. They didn't expect us to charge right through it. Donald allowed himself a tight smile. The Zorgons had underestimated human audacity, and they were about to pay for it in blood. The HSS Leviathan burst through the asteroid field, its armored hull shrugging off the impacts of the tumbling rocks. On the bridge, Donald gripped the armrests of his command chair as the viewscreen filled with the sight of the Zorgon fleet, caught completely off guard by the human ship's audacious maneuver. All weapons, open fire, Donald barked. Give them everything we've got. The Leviathan's railgun swiveled and locked onto the nearest Zorgon cruiser. With a thunderous roar, the massive guns unleashed a barrage of hyper-accelerated projectiles that tore through the alien ship's shields and hull like tissue paper. Explosions blossomed along the cruiser's flank as the railgun rounds found their mark, setting off secondary detonations that ripped the ship apart from within. As the cruiser disintegrated, the Leviathan's missile batteries opened up, sending swarms of high-yield warheads streaking towards the remaining Zorgon ships. The alien vessels scrambled to evade, but the sheer volume of fire from the human supercarrier overwhelmed their defences. One by one the Zorgon ships fell, consumed by the relentless onslaught of human weaponry. On the bridge of the Zorgon flagship, Admiral Kraganak slammed his fist against the arm of his command throne. The primitive-looking human vessel had caught him completely by surprise, and now his fleet was paying the price for his hubris. Impossible! Kragnak snarled. How can such a crude ship possess such firepower? As if in answer, another barrage from the Leviathan's railguns struck the flagship, sending shudders through the deck plates. Alarms blared and consoles sparked as the ship's systems overloaded. Admiral, our shields are down to twenty percent, a Zorgon officer reported, fear evident in his voice. We can't take much more of this. Kragnak ground his teeth in frustration. He had underestimated the humans, and it had cost him dearly. But he would not let this upstart species best him. He would make them pay for this humiliation. On the surface of the Andromedan colony, Governor Telos watched in awe as the Leviathan tore through the Zorgon fleet like a hot knife through butter. The human ship moved with a grace and precision that belied its bulky frame, dancing through the enemy fire as if it were a mere inconvenience. Incredible, Talos breathed. I never would have believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. The humans, they're far more capable than we ever gave them credit for. As the battle raged on, Donald received an urgent communication from Commander Riley. The fighter squadrons were taking heavy losses, their numbers dwindling as the Zorgon reinforcements closed in. Captain, we can't hold them off much longer, Riley shouted over the din of explosions and laser fire. We need to fall back and regroup. Donald clenched his jaw. He knew Riley was right, but retreating now would mean abandoning the colony to its fate. He glanced at the tactical display, his mind racing as he weighed his options. Sir, we're detecting multiple hyperspace signatures on the edge of the system, Lieutenant Chen reported, her voice tight with tension. It's the Zorgon reinforcements. They'll be on top of us in minutes. Donald closed his eyes for a moment, the weight of his decision settling on his shoulders like a physical burden. The lives of his crew, the colonists, and perhaps the fate of the entire war hung in the balance. He had to make a choice, and he had to make it now. Donald's jaw tightened as he surveyed the tactical display. The Zorgan reinforcements were closing in fast, and the Leviathan's fighter squadrons were being pushed to their limit. He had to act now, or risk losing everything they had fought so hard for. Helm, set a course directly for the heart of the Zorgon fleet, Donald ordered, his voice steady despite the gravity of the situation. We're going to draw their fire and give our fighters a chance to regroup. The bridge crew exchanged nervous glances, but quickly set about carrying out his commands. The Leviathan surged forward, its engines straining as it plunged headlong into the midst of the enemy ships. Almost immediately, 
the Zorgan fleet unleashed a barrage of laser fire and plasma torpedoes, pummeling the Leviathan's armored hull. The ship shuddered under the onslaught, its shields flaring as they absorbed the brunt of the attack. Shields down to sixty percent, Lieutenant Chen shouted over the blaring alarms. Hull breaches on deck seven and twelve. Donald gripped the armrests of his chair, his knuckles white. Divert all available power to the shields and forward weapons, he commanded. We have to hold out long enough for Commander Riley to make his move. As the Leviathan traded blows with the Zorgan ships, Commander Riley led his battered fighter squadron in a daring assault on the enemy flagship. Weaving through the chaos of the battle, they managed to slip past the ship's defences and target its main weapons and propulsion systems. This is Commander Riley. His voice crackled over the comm. We've disabled the flagship's primary systems. The Zorgons are in disarray. A cheer erupted on the Leviathan's bridge, but it was short-lived. Admiral Kragnak, realizing the tide had turned against him, gave the order to retreat, but not before launching one final devastating salvo at the Leviathan. Captain, we have incoming plasma torpedoes, Lieutenant Chen cried out, her face pale. The Leviathan can't take another hit like that. Donald closed his eyes for a moment, his decision made. Order all hands to evacuate immediately, he said, his voice calm and resolute. I'll stay behind and guide the ship to intercept those torpedoes. Sir, you can't, Commander Ramirez protested. We need you. Donald shook his head. The Leviathan is lost, Commander. But we can still save the colony and our fighters. Now go, that's an order. As the crew reluctantly evacuated, Donald took the helm, his hand steady on the controls. He guided the Leviathan into the path of the oncoming torpedoes, the ship groaning under the strain. Come on, old girl, he murmured. One last ride. The torpedoes slammed into the Leviathan, engulfing the ship in a blinding flash of light. The force of the explosion tore through the supercarrier, consuming Donald and a portion of the Zorgan fleet in a fiery inferno. In the aftermath of the battle, the Andromedan colony stood intact, its people gazing up at the skies in awe and gratitude. The Leviathan and the brave human crew that had manned her had sacrificed everything to ensure their survival. So Ambassador Primus, humbled by the display of human courage and determination, addressed the Galactic Council. We were wrong to dismiss the humans, he said, his voice heavy with emotion. They have proven themselves to be true allies and defenders of the innocent. We owe them a debt that can never be repaid. As news of the Leviathan's final stand spread across the galaxy, the name Donald Johnson became synonymous with heroism and self-sacrifice. Though the ship and its creator were gone, their legacy would endure a shining example of the indomitable human spirit. The galaxy had been forever changed by the events of that fateful day. The role of humanity, once viewed as insignificant, had been irrevocably altered. They were no longer the outsiders, the primitives scrabbling at the edges of the galactic stage. They were heroes, allies, and a force to be reckoned with, or to be. And though the road ahead would be long and fraught with challenges, one thing was certain. The humans would face them head-on, just as the Leviathan had faced the Zorgon fleet, with courage, determination, and an unwavering commitment to the greater good. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.